All right, everybody, we're once again back in Steam Showcase season. And for this video spotlight, it is going to be all my favorite games from uh, Tacticon 2023. We are starting things off with Rogue Voltage. This is a modular synthesizer deck building electrical roguelike. And that is certainly a mouthful. Our story is as the far future and once again the earth is screwed. The gravity has gone out of control and remaining people need to survive by using devices, keeping gravity in check and fighting all kinds of crazy monsters. So this is going to take some uh, explaining as to how things work. Your backpack or rack that you see on the left hand side of the screen is built around different devices. Devices such as generators will generate energy which you attach using the different color wires to devices. The color of course designates where it will go, green to green, blue to blue, and white is kind of like your uh, universal power. Now. Devices will have specific conditions or ways of gaining, using, or magnifying power. The more charge that goes to a device, the more potent the effect is going to be. If you charge a laser gun with two charges, it will do two points of damage, and so on and so forth. And for each turn of combat, you'll need to rewire and set up how you want your devices to work. But wait. There's even more to this. The gravity side of things is that you can control the timeline that you see in the top right corner of the screen by pushing enemies either forward or back, and the same goes for each character. Now you may think that you should always want to push enemies away. However, there are devices that synergize if the enemy and the character are synchronized in terms of their time. Yeah, there's definitely a lot going on here. You'll get devices that will proc based off enemy death, healing, taking damage, and so on and so forth. And you're going to have to kind of constantly be adjusting and readjusting your strategy depending on the best way of using your energy each turn. And this is one of those games that it is you're going to either really love it or you're going to back away slowly much like a zaktronic style game which i believe the developer was inspired by and now i want to see zaktronic programming puzzle dungeon crawler so any developer please get in on that so rogue voltage is not what i would describe as an easy game to learn or a very pick up and play style game i think that's definitely where it may have a fault, no electrical wiring, int pun intended. Even for someone like me who tends to like rapidly process and do turns fast in any kind of RPG or roguelike game, I had to spend a few minutes sometimes on each turn just trying to figure out, okay, if this is moved over here and I do this amount of damage and then this pushes the timeline back, how am I going to make all this work? So this is definitely not a game I would recommend to the casual or new roguelike fan. However, if you are someone looking for something that is very different, very challenging, and very advanced to play, then I highly recommend some Rogue Voltage. We now have Super Fantasy Kingdom, a roguelite city builder. We keep waking up every morning to find our kingdom destroyed and we're trapped in a loop. In order to get past it, we are going to have to try and survive each night. So the gameplay loop here is that the each day is split between a day and night cycle. During the day, you will organize your various villagers to work in buildings, collect resources, build more stuff. And then at night time, you must have your warriors defend your camp or your kingdom from invading enemies. Each day, it gets more and more challenging. So the roguelite nature is that you'll use glory to build roads, extend out your kingdom, find new services, characters, features, and so on, which become permanently unlocked on subsequent runs. This can also include getting access to starting resources for free 
unlocking and upgrading your starting hero, and so on and so forth. And it's a very interesting take on having this kind of roguelite, but it's all about city building. With that said, the start of this game feels a little bit on the painfully slow side. You're going to be highly limited until you can get like more starting workers and just be able to get the initial infrastructure off the ground quick. But I really like the theme of this one, the whole idea of, again, having this kind of city builder, but you're kind of growing it as a roguelite. So definitely an interesting concept, and if you're looking for something that's of the roguelite variety, but one when you're not really hacking and slashing, but building and resource management, then I would recommend checking out Super Fantasy Kingdom. We now turn to How. This is a kind of puzzle meets strategy game. In a world where werewolves have cursed people by howling and turning them into the beasts, a deaf hero is going to explore the land and figure out how to undo the curse and try to save as many lives as they can. So the game itself is played out in a series of kind of one screen challenges. You'll decide how your character will move and behave each turn. They'll have a number of actions based on the scroll you see at the bottom. For each action, you can choose either move, attack, or use special abilities. When you move into the area where a wolf is, the wolf will move accordingly, based on how many times you go. With your ultimate plan is to get to the exit. Now where it gets interesting and where the puzzle side comes in, is that there's two different rewards for beating a level. Beating it within the certain number of rounds, and killing all the werewolves. The kind of uh, elements you get in the skulls are used to unlock additional areas, unlock special abilities, and so on. But here's the thing, it is not possible to do both in a single play. You will have to repeat levels and even come back to some based on getting better upgrades and so on if you want to see this game all the way through to 100%. I like the aesthetic of this one, the kind of like scroll look and feel to it. My issue again is with having to replay the maps. That that can be a little cumbersome from people wanting to kind of 100% each map on their first get-go. From a UX perspective, I would like, like once the wolves start to move, to maybe chart that on the screen. Because it can be a little tricky in terms of their behavior when you have two or more wolves kind of moving concurrently as to where they're going to go. And this whole game is set up for this kind of move by move, step by step determination of how to deal with the enemies. But this does look like a very interesting puzzle game. I'm curious about where they're going to go with additional powers, any new enemy types, and so on. And if you are too, then be sure to check out how. And now for something with a lot more action to it, it's Blade Prince Academy. This is a tactical RPG, where our kind of twist here is that the entire game is played plausible real time. So when our school for our magical individuals who have to protect things gets attacked, it's up to us to rally the remaining students and investigate who attacked, what are their goals, and try to stop them. So this game, as you can tell by the footage, definitely draws comparisons to the likes of Transistor, where each character will move around, you'll have different abilities that you will have to make use of, and the challenge is trying to get everything working and synchronized between you and your different teammates. In this footage right here, I'm controlling two characters, but you will get parties up to four as well in the main game. My main issue with this game is that I just do not like plausible real time. I feel it's very chaotic to do right with one character, let alone three or four. And this game is unfortunately not changing my mind in that respect. It can become very chaotic to try and play, especially again when you're trying to cover the different characters, each one having access to multiple abilities, and again, in a game like this, timing and making sure skills will proc at the right moment is very important. 
But if you are a fan of puzzle real-time style games, then this one could certainly be an interesting one worth checking out. I'm curious if there will be any more concessions for uh, strictly turn-based fans in the main game, however. For our next game, this is Wandering Sword. This is a JRPG inspired, and I should say Octopath Traveler inspired game. It has that kind of very beautiful billboarding effect that we saw in that one. Now this one I believe is heavily inspired by Chinese mythology and history. When our caravan of friends are attacked by bandits and we are the sole survivor, we seek out a master of martial arts and swords play in order to take revenge, save the region, and of course, grow in power and level up. So from what we played of the demo, a major aspect of this one is going to be building your party, trying to get as many upgrades as you can. It uses a kind of, a, I guess, like acupuncture style to activate points in your key in order to unlock new passives and so on. Combat itself is kind of a mix of a traditional turn-based JRPG with the active time battle kind of thing that we saw from older RPGs. Characters have an action bar below their health. When the bar fills up, they're able to make an action. And you can perform different moves, block, special abilities you unlock, and all that other good stuff. Now, from what we spent in the demo of this one, this is not looking like it's going to be a small game. I can envision there's going to be a lot of exploration, a lot of upgrades, side quests, and more. So if you are looking for a lengthy RPG, Wandering Sword could be it. And I'm again, like with our last game, I'm kind of curious to see like where things are going to go in the main version, especially in terms of length and progression systems. Now up is Shogun Showdown. This is a combat martial arts deck building roguelike. I know that's another very interesting mouthful there. For this one, our kind of twist is that characters will all take their turns in a we go style. Your actions, combat, defense, whatever, take in the form of the tiles that you see at the bottom of the screen. Each tile will do a specific number of damage. It will have a specific number of turns that it must recharge before you can use it again. And after each combat, you are free to try and upgrade them in different ways, such as lowering their cost, raising power, and so on and so forth. The number of times you can upgrade a card are represented by the circles that you see above said card, and there are ways to add more of those pips if you so choose. The combat system itself is very interesting. Different enemies will have different attack patterns and different ways of attacking. The guy that you see on the left there, he is going to do a charge at me. And at the moment, there's no way for me to avoid that. So he's just going to run to me for one. But you will eventually get skills that allow you to dash. And one of like, the best things is that you can kind of combo your skills. As you can see, it goes in the order of bottom to top. So you can set up like a multiple plan where you'll attack enemies in the front, bounce all the way to the back, go back to the front, hit them some more, and just have fun like that. Now, there is persistent upgrades and so on that we did not get a chance to try out in this demo, but I did really like what I was seeing. This is a very kind of snappy game to play. It's very easy to get into, combat is fast, and I'm curious to see where they're going to go in terms of more upgrades, more tools, and so on. But this is when I will be another very solid uh, turn-based kind of deck-building roguelike game for you. And for something that is definitely a blast from the past, we turn to God Sworn. This is a game that combines essentially Age of Mythology with Warcraft 3. You are controlling various gods and their factions who are going to be doing battle with one another. You'll be building your settlement out of various buildings you see in the bottom right. Each building will allow you to either gain more resources or unlock more units. Your chosen god that you see on the upper left is your hero unit on the field. They will level up, 
you'll choose different powers and they'll aid your side or hurt the enemy in different ways. Now, your key kind of progression is the number of followers you have access to, and you have different resources that you can see in the upper right. So, prayer or faith is used to unlock special researches and also get access to some like the more, I guess, quote unquote, mythological units. And yes, you can see me just summon a dragon down there to help my little army. As the game goes through, you'll unlock different uh, classes of your temple. When you level up, this will unlock the next tech tree, more researches, units, and all that good stuff. Now, it can be a little tricky if you aren't familiar or you've forgotten a lot about this style of RTS, but you're going to be fighting over resources on the map, which of course my camera is blocking at the moment. You'll need ore, which is kind of like your second tier resource in order to get access to the better units, their siege and so on. Now the demo that we played, it is only available against the AI, but the game is going to have multiplayer, a story, campaign, and so on. So, all in all, from playing Godsworn, it doesn't look like it's going to be reinventing the RTS wheel, but if you are someone who misses the era of Warcraft, Age of Mythology, and those kinds of strategy games, then this could be a great trip down the memory lane. And with that, we are about halfway done the showcase. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I'm going to talk about my favorite games of night number two of when we cover Tacticon. And if you're interested in my thoughts on design, then be sure to check out my game design books. For entry-level students, we have 20 Essential Games to Study, and then the Game Design Deep Dive series that takes an extensive look at different genres, with more coming soon. We now have La Sara Summit Kingdom. This is a city builder in the similar logistical fashion of Anno. But we're replacing islands and the future in the tropics with the Himalayans. You are tasked with building up settlements on various mountainsides. With, of course, the occasional avalanche that can happen, you know, sometimes. The general flow of this one is that each mountain has three distinct uh, phases or cliff sides to it. The different cliff sides will impact what resources work best there, and you'll need to set up uh, movement and warehouses to get resources from one region to the other. As you play through, the main thing is going to be keeping resources moving to their respective areas. Similar to Anno, this is a game where buildings kind of operate on their own. Once you've set up a production chain, that is going to work until the end of time or unless you decide to delete something. And you'll need to set up essentially the transportation from resource creator to the actual manufacturer, the manufacturer to your kind of city marketplaces for those items to take effect. When you've built your city up enough, you can upgrade various buildings, thereby allowing you to get more people in them, and people and yaks are your main resource in terms of working the various buildings and services. Now the game itself, or the main game, talks about there being multiple mountains to build on top of, which we did not really get a chance to see in this demo. My only real problem that I have is that the UI can be a little uh, finicky in some areas. Lots of little buttons you have to click on in the bottom of the screen to go through the different building types. And you're going to have to set up kind of the production chains one building at a time. Which can be a little bit annoying when you're dealing with multiple buildings that you're all trying to set up at once. But again, with the fact that once they're set up they just work on their own, it does kind of negate that issue. I really enjoy this one. It's a very different setting and different kind of structure compared to some of the other city builders we played. And with the added involvement of the avalanches and protecting your various settlements, does open things up for some very interesting designs. So this is definitely one that I would recommend if you are a fan of city building and looking for something worth climbing towards. We now turn to Project Even, a tactical strategy game with a lot of challenge and cursing, not by you, but more by the game itself. But we run 
a mercenary group in the future, and it's going to be up to us to take on missions, do lots and lots of shooting, and try not to get our crew killed. So, the game itself is definitely designed as kind of a, not so much an XCOM-like, but a Phoenix Point-like, in that characters will aim and shoot based on their kind of targeting tone. The better the gun whacker the gun, the tighter the cone it is, and you'll have to position your characters to try and take advantage of enemies, get overwatch shots, and so on. Now, each character can be outfitted with different weapons and gear, as well as level up to get access to different skills, better passives, and so on. Now, from what we played of this one, the UI is okay. There's a lot that's going on here, so just being able to nudge characters around various objects, and it's definitely going for more of the kind of like, I want to say real world, but more of the kind of actual tactical strategy. Like this is not kind of in the same board game style of the later XCOMs, where characters can, you know, shoot through walls or immediately turn around and miss a shot. If your gun is pointed at an enemy and their body takes up the entire reticle, they are going to be hit. Now, we didn't really get a chance to see advanced elements in Project Haven, like will there be special abilities, special powers, and more specifically, how will the enemies respond or deliver them? From what we played of the kind of demo mission that we ran through, it's basically kind of everyone is on even playing fields. But this one definitely has some potential. And they can make the UI, I think, a little bit easier to parse, especially being able to maybe undo an action if you accidentally hit the wrong button. This could be a tactical strategy game worth investing some points into. We now have Breachway. This is kind of FTL by way of a deck building roguelike. We are exploring the galaxy, fighting against alien spaceships one card battle at a time. Now we've played various versions of this game in the past, and has certainly come a very long way. The structure here is that your ship itself has various hard points, which you can attach various weapons, shielding, and so on. Each piece of gear manned by a different character will unlock those cards that will serve as your deck. You have three resources, red, green, and blue, you can kind of see in the bottom left. Red is for offense, green is for defense, and blue is for kind of support slash style skills. Each turn, you'll need to decide which cards to use, as well as what to target on the enemy ship. If you do enough damage to a component, it will be shut down for repair for a few turns, allowing you to get some extra hits in. Missiles can be launched from either you or the opponent, which unless you have specific ways to defend against it, they will hit and, of course, do a lot of damage. And over the course of the run, you will find additional characters who will join your crew, new gear, the means of adding in modules that can upgrade, and so on and so forth. And this is shaping up to be another very interesting and challenging deck building roguelike. The only thing that I did have some issues with is that it can be a little hard at the moment to kind of parse in terms of which cards or what gear is going to be better or what you should be looking at. And that can just come with time and learning more about the game. I'm curious to see where they're going to go in terms of more unique cards or tactics. As some of the advanced cards we saw use multiple resources, and there's a lot of combo related synergies going on such as a car that will buff your attack cards if it's played first, or one that will buff cards of the same name. So if you are looking for a deck builder in space, then I would definitely suggest checking out Breachway. We now turn to the settlings, and this is either a settlement builder by way of a puzzle game, or a puzzle game by way of a settlement builder. As the name heavily implies, this game was inspired by the likes of the settlers, and lemmings. It is your job to manage the various settlings as they go about their day completing tasks and trying to get them to that zeppelin that will appear in different maps in order to move on to the next puzzle. So the gameplay in this one is kind of like a mix between the two. 
you'll hand over various tools to your settings, which will allow them to perform a certain task. You can also buy items and place stuff down that they can either interact with or will kind of corral them around the map. When they're carrying an object that can be used by a building, they will deliver it. This will be used to either construct new structures, sell those items for gold, or get mana. That is the blue orb you see in the upper left that can be used to power up spells. So, each map is in of itself a puzzle that you will have to solve using the various items, buildings, and so on. Some of the advanced play in the game will be setting up buildings that will essentially produce infinite number of resources or items, provided that you supply with the prerequisite item. Such as, apparently, I think carrots can give you pickaxes, and things get only stranger from there. There is combat as well as you will have to get weapons created in order to turn characters into warriors who can then go to fight the various enemies. And it's looking like there's going to be a lot to this game. With that said, the UI is a little bit on the cumbersome side. It is one of those games where there's a lot of things going on and it may take you some time to figure out the exact logic of how the various signs work, how characters will move around, interact, and so on. But this is definitely a game that I would say is worth checking out if you're looking for a very different kind of puzzle builder, builder puzzle, however we want to define it. But I am curious to see kind of where this game is going to go in terms of advanced challenges and whether or not they'll be able to stick the landing to give you a lot of things to do without either overwhelming or making the game feel very cumbersome to play. For our last game of the showcase, this is Star Vaders. We checked out this one again on an earlier showcase, but I decided to give it another look here for Tacticon. So this is Deck Building Space Invaders. It is your job to stop the enemies from reaching the kind of danger zone that is the kind of bottom three rows on the board. To do that, you will move your mech around, use various cards and abilities, and try not to get your doom too high. The kind of twist in the mechanics here is that every card has an energy or heat cost. When you get to full heat, the next card you use will overheat, thereby kind of rendering that card useless for the remainder of the play or of that match. But there are ways to get around this or even make use of burnt cards in specific strategies. And the challenge of this one is definitely figuring out what kind of build you want to go towards and then using that to kind of mitigate as much of the enemy ships as you can as you are going to always be outnumbered and you'll have to make use of strategies such as bombs attacks that will bounce or proc off of different things and so on there are going to be different mechs which will affect kind of cars that you get access to as well as different pilots who have their own specific cars that they'll make. We kind of saw an unlock at the end of the demo where you get a character who makes use of cards that do more about freezing or hitting multiples rather than this character that you see that's all about kind of synergizing with high heat or being able to get around that. So all in all, this is only going to be another very challenging and very interesting roguelike. And again, as with all the games from uh, Tacticon 2023, another one that I am certainly looking forward to playing more of when it is released. But with that said, we are done with Tacticon 2023. So you'll find links to all the games down below, do all the YouTubing stuff people will tell you to do. Be sure to visit our Discord and Patreon. If you let me tickle your game for a future stream or showcase, please reach out and come back for the discussions on game design here and on game wisdom where you sound the art and science of games.